What's going on, fellow A plusers? It is I, your host, as always, Adam Perez, back once again with a brand new video. As today, we're going to be getting into our spoiler discussion for Transformers Rise of the Beast. That's right, the newest entry into the franchise just went ahead and dropped last week, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, having a pretty good outing so far, certainly at the box office. Uh, but we are here to go ahead and talk about this movie. You know, yesterday I watched this film, I had the opportunity to go out Tuesday night check out the film by myself when I came back home I did record a non-spoiler review and while I'm definitely proud of the non-spoiler review there was a part of me that was like you know this movie's been out almost a week if anything I really kind of want to dig into this movie a little bit more and discuss some of my feelings about it and just really be open so if you have had the opportunity to check out Transformers Rise of the Beast this is probably the spoiler review for you if you have not um, and you still want to see the movie check out the movie and definitely come back to this and certainly share your thoughts. Because remember, guys, at the end of the day, these are just my A-plus opinions, but I want to know yours. So let me know your thoughts about Rise of the Beast in the comment section box below, guys. But let's talk about this, shall we? Because, uh, listen, after Bumblebee, I really had no idea the direction in which they certainly wanted to go. I'm kind of over and glad that they went ahead and went past the Michael Bay era of Transformers. Even though he is certainly still a producer on these films, I believe the director, Stephen Kappel, did reach out to him in regards to how do you handle Transformers visually, being very, you know, um, uh, visual effects heavy sort of thing. If uh, Stephen Kappel's not used to it, I can understand him reaching out to Michael Bay for some guidance uh, and some some advice but I hope that's all that he certainly got advice for and it certainly seemed that way because going to see Transformers Rise of the Beast felt very much like we were growing up from what we had in Bumblebee. Uh, Rise of the Beast I thought for the most part did a really great job of balancing um, the human characters and their emotional aspects to their story along with our um, Autobots and Maximals as well. Um, there's a lot certainly packed into this like over two hour movie if I'm not mistaken, this might be the longest of the Transformers franchise. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong in the comment section box below. Um, but I do think that they they took the pacing really well and they utilized all their time extremely well. This was not a movie that felt like it was bombarded with more visual effects and action and not necessarily caring about the human aspect. The humans definitely carried this movie, if you ask me. Anthony Ramos, I thought, was um, absolutely remarkable in here as Noah. You also had Dominique Fish back who played played Elena, two great um, protagonists, if you ask me, and a really great foundation for them to build on. Look, Haley Steinfeld is incredible in her own right, but clearly her and Bumblebee had their story, told it, and it was certainly utilized as a great launching point. And for them to utilize that and understand the strengths of what that movie was and still, in, and still inject that sort of same feeling into this particular movie. Now, granted, it's not as heart-wrenching or, you know, as heartfelt as Bumblebee certainly was, but I do think that um, unlike the Michael Bay uh, uh, Transformers that we've gotten, I do think that this movie, this this particular movie has done a much better job of staying focused on those characters, utilizing them extremely well throughout the entire movie, because when you literally have the Autobots and the Maximals having to depend and rely on the humans to accomplish this mission, it definitely makes it a focus for them to certainly stick around, and you have somebody like Noah with the great family relationships. I loved his bond with his little brother Noah. I mean, his little brother in here also um, really went a long way in regards to building those emotional attachments. Even his little brother wanting to sort of um, have his big bros back, wanting to go on the mission with him, not able to, but then making sure that somebody like Mirage certainly lived up to his promise of protecting his brother. Little things like that, I think, really do go a long way with building that sort of family aspect to the um, the Noah Diaz character. So I think Anthony Ramos did an amazing job. I probably could have learned or used a little bit more of Elena. I, I loved her brilliance and her smarts here. I love the job that she had really bringing sort of the being the educational one, if you will, um, of this team, um, really helping out the uh, Autobots and Maximals in here. She does have a little bit of a backstory in regards to her relationship with her father that's explored, but I do wish that maybe that was explored just a little bit more. But overall, um, really strong uh, in regards 
regards to the balance, I think, between humans and all the action that we had in here. Um, great uh, voice work as well. Uh, we had uh, Peter Cullen coming back once again as Optimus Prime. Keith Davidson, which was a huge surprise, is me, uh, a huge surprise for me, but really brought a great levity and humor to um, this movie as Mirage. I didn't even recognize it was Ron Perlman as Optimus Primal in here, but I thought he did an amazing job. But the person that really stuck out to me, and she always stands out to me in any movie that she's in, Michelle Yeoh as Razor, uh, as Air Razor, uh, I thought was absolutely great. Getting the opportunity to see what she's like at the beginning of the movie and then the corruption at the end, I, I thought was brilliant. I thought Michelle really played that role up as best as she possibly could uh, as, a, as a voice actor, you know what I mean? So look, I, I personally have never really been that impressed with Joby Harold's work um, and when it comes to writing. I believe he actually created the story of this script. If you look at the credits, I mean, the screenplay has got like three or four people certainly attached to it. So uh, a lot of hands in the pot here. But I thought for the most part that the story was definitely there. And I can honestly see why Stephen Cappell Jr. would be um, the runner up for coming back to direct another sequel. I think he did a brilliant job in here because visually, it was stunning the action in here just felt like on a completely different level especially the climax of this movie i'm talking like end game end game vibes the concept and the idea of literally just seeing like what the five six maybe autobots and maximals together just taking on this horde of um you know villains and stuff visually it was incredible to certainly see on screen and very riveting uh, i went ahead and saw it in the dolby cinema and i kid you not my seat it wasn't even like a d-box seat you know those seats that like make you feel like you're in the movie and shake and stuff no like the audio was just that good that it literally and the bass just caused like this rumbling in the theater so the the action was just full throttle in here and honestly you know <laughs> At first, the opportunity of seeing Anthony Ramos get involved as Noah Diaz in this battle, I wasn't quite sure how I felt about it, but the more that I saw Noah involved, and I'm talking about when Mirage literally places himself on Noah and 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 Noah uses him sort of as an armor almost like a suit you know my mind immediately went to Power Rangers when I saw it but then as the movie kept progressing I kept thinking you know he, he kind of looks like Mega Man to me like I get a lot of Mega Man vibes from Noah Diaz and Anthony Ramos as you know Anthony Ramos as Noah Diaz but I it's one of those things where it's like why didn't we think about this before? Like, I think it's a pretty cool concept. Them starting off first with just the glove and he can utilize that as a gun or a blaster if he needs to. But the idea of Mirage literally encompassing himself over Noah uh, in here, I thought was really cool visually to kind of see. And it did make me think to myself like, Hasbro, what are you gonna do with Power Rangers then, right? Like, is this gonna be like a Power Rangers suit design? Um, you know, the idea of crossing over Power Rangers and Transformers has always been teased for the longest time and considering the tease at the end of this movie with um uh transformers and possibly gi joe crossing over it does make me wonder what is going through the minds of those over at hasbro um and will that crossover between joe and transformers lead to other bigger things in the future for something like power rangers considering that they're all under the same umbrella so if anything this kind of intrigues me a little bit more to know what jonathan entwistle is certainly creating in regards to his power ranger reboot um but um, who knows, maybe somewhere down the line, um, we do get ourselves a Power Rangers and Transformers uh, reboot. But if anything, uh, I, I would say I am fascinated with the idea of it being G.I. Joe that sort of knows about Noah and his adventures with these robots and things like that. If anything, if there is a worry that I have, it's the fact that the G.I. Joe movies have not done really well whatsoever at the box office. Um, I personally was not a fan of Snake Eyes. Um, I just did not care care for that movie at all and I I literally first off I literally had to like sit through this movie like two or three times and just finish it and even when I did finish it I was still displeased with it uh, but I know that this movie certainly has its fans so how do you go from a Snake Eyes movie to a great Transformers Rise of the Beast and sort of um um uh what's the word that I'm looking for sort of um 
come to the conclusion that the crossover is the best idea for it when one franchise is thriving and the other one unfortunately isn't like is the lackluster return of the gi joe name now cinematically going to go ahead and bring down the transformers franchise if they try and pull this off so other than that that's really my only concern in regards to a possible crossover between transformers and gi joe on the upside of things i would definitely love to see something along those lines especially if they can utilize transformers to catapult these characters once again if more people are going out to see transformers why not include some of these gi joe characters in there uh, and then it might actually wind up giving you a boost to maybe do another gi joe sequel at some particular point in time now that you have more eyes on this particular franchise than you did last time to be fair also i do think snake eyes was released during the pandemic so not a lot of people were going to the movie theaters anyway so it certainly flopped how a movie like snake eyes would certainly do in the theaters these days who certainly knows but um, there's definitely some potential there um uh, but also some worry but i gotta admit transformers right now is on the upswing um not to say that we've forgotten about the michael bay era but bumblebee this clearly being a sequel to bumblebee also i think they even referenced the relationship between bumblebee and um hayley steinfeld's character in here um and now we got transformers rise of the beast and you know what what i will also say in regards to this movie i kind of really enjoyed the parallels between noah uh, along with um, Optimus, you know, the idea that these two people are really kind of only focusing on themselves, on their own people, wanting to sort of save um, their families and the people that they care about. When in reality, the idea is if we cared enough about saving both groups of people, um, that at the end of the day, we would all certainly be safe. And we get to get the opportunity to kind of see Noah along with uh, along with um, um, uh, Optimus really coming to that conclusion and really at the end of the day, sacrificing their only way home in order to not only protect themselves in the future, but also to protect Earth who have certainly come through when it comes to humans um really showing their worth um in regards to why they certainly should be protected and so i thought it was a really good story uh for both optimus all along with noah uh and it was just really cool to kind of see both of their parallels in here now granted look i probably would have loved to have seen more of the maximals but i do think considering how you got autobots and maximals in this story how you get them to meet up with one another uh without it feeling too rushed or just not natural natural and very forced. I think they did a brilliant job in that regards. The opening intro of here, setting up the maximal, sort of like the prelude to the adventure that we have, going right into the, the logo, if you will, of the movie, and then jumping us to present day, 1994. Uh, I thought they really handled the telling of the story extremely well, um, giving everybody the time to breathe, let their stories be told, and bringing in the maximals full strength when they absolutely needed to. I'm sure some people probably wish that the maximals were maybe more involved in this movie but i honestly thought like we i don't think chitara chitara is that isn't that from uh thundercats um um the, the cheetah and rhino didn't really get too much dialogue but that's that's perfectly okay with me visually everybody looked great um so i really appreciated the balance that we wind up having and even some emotional aspects for these transformers right like the air razor and the optimus primal scene was actually kind of gut-wrenching to me a little bit the facial expressions visually of optimus primal during that time was pretty convincing if you ask me um so i i was a really big fan of it um also the soundtrack in this movie was certainly everything almost felt like anything i heard was like a head bopper uh, i was just really impressed if anything i um, makes me kind of want to check out the entirety of the soundtrack since i grew up um you know in the bronx and in brooklyn during the 80s during the 90s like this is when i look at anthony ramos as noah like that's me bro like that's me um so i always appreciate the diversity always appreciate the inclusion for sure um but uh, definitely made it feel so much more relatable to me but man this soundtrack just absolutely hits um so i might have to go ahead and certainly check it out for myself but guys listen um these are just simply my thoughts in regards to transformers rise of the beast really looking forward towards a sequel and again i think if they can continue to push these movies and up the ante but not sacrifice the human development and the main human characters in here and have a really good balance to it like rise of the beast keep making movies like this man and i'll be perfectly happy um you know they may not be doing anything 
uh extremely new if you will the threats definitely get bigger i don't know how you get bigger than unicron unless you wind up bringing back megatron with some other villains that we certainly have not seen i'm not too uh, up on transformers lore in that regards to like what their rogues gallery is and villains that they have to face i'm sure they'll definitely come up with a pretty good story but you know i think this is a formula that definitely works and if you continue to focus on the human characters with the autobots and them still carrying their own story um uh, but not over you know not uh, overindulging and just a big special effects spectacle then i do think that we have something on our hands but everything worked for me man balance for characters really enjoyable story climactic action especially towards the end i'm a happy camper after rise of the beast but again guys these are just simply my a plus opinions i want to know yours what did you guys think of transformers rise of the beast if i had to grade it maybe give me like a b plus i'll probably give this movie like a b plus uh, i'm not quite sure exactly what the audience score certainly was maybe even the a minus i think the cinema score for rise of the beast might be about a minus and i can definitely probably agree with that um i so i, I might be in between between a minus and a b plus as of right now but uh, again guys let me go ahead and know your thoughts. Am I uh, overgrading this? Was it not as good as you guys, as I certainly thought it was? Did you guys have a blast with this movie? Please let me know your thoughts in the comment section box below. But until then, guys, that'll do it for us here. Uh, so we'll see you later on this weekend. But until then, do us a big favor. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. And keep it A+. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.